All right, today's Pyware tutorial, we're talking about how to set up the stage for indoor and indoor writing. Now, I've got a lot of this information in several other different videos, but I thought I would just amalgamate them all into one so that you can um, have that info. Now, I've got a fresh file opened up here, and of course, it's uh, you know geared towards uh, marching band, fall, outside writing. We want to get it all fixed up to look like your indoor uh, arena. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to Utilities and Grid Designer. Grid Designer is going to allow us to pick the space in which we will design on. Okay. Now you don't have to mess with any of this stuff here. This is all for the football field side. We want to go down here in this bottom left corner to load. Now from here you're going to see that Pyware comes with all these different uh, grids. A lot of high school and college, uh, football grids, different colors, but down towards the bottom, you start seeing a lot of these um, WGI indoor grids, um, six foot grids or five foot grids, five by five. Um, if your kids are used to that eight to five step size and you want to keep that from the fall, uh, you can use these ones, eight by five. Um, and then your size should be here. Usually a lot of the um, the uh, tarp sizes uh, are pretty standard. If it's not, you can always um, multiply your uh, feet by inches and then divide it by 22.5, which is the size of an eight to five step. And then you can move some of these sliders out here to fix it. But we'll go with um, a 50 by 70 foot grid. Now, some people like to use the 50 yard line is the center and then the 45 side one and side two and they have that down the middle. If you want to um, customize this stuff, all of it is customizable. You could bring them onto the uh, grid so that when the kids are, are uh, looking at the charts, if you give them charts, they can see that. Um, I usually push mine off to the, the back and the front. And a lot of my clients like to work in terms of uh, numbers along one axis and letters along the other. Um, and that could be uh, the opposite, uh, letters this way and numbers that way. But for whatever reason, it, it helps them. Um, some people like to have more um, information along the middle here. Um, I'll show you how to add some more stuff to this because I have a lot of people that, that like to do this. So, so if you want to customize these to be letters or numbers, you've got to click on the little handles outside here, and then you can modify them up here in this custom marker value area. So let's say we want this 40 yard line to be the letter A. We'd click down here, and that selects that line, and the custom value comes up, it says 40. I want to make that an A. So I'll just put A in. Do the next one. In this case, you could say to a student, you should be at E1. And when E1 intersect, that's where the student should be. Um, so it seems to be a uh, efficient way of teaching. Now, if you wanted to add more to this, uh, more letters similar uh, to match the numbers, you just come down here to this corner and you drag them out. and you put them in the middle. And then of course you go through again and you've got to redo your um, you know, custom marker values again. See, so I'm changing these to match what's going on on the floor. So now you've got a grid, you've got that set up. If you have a JPEG file of your floor, that's what we'll do next. So. But one thing I want to tell you is that if you add your floor here, you can't really modify or make changes to it in the file. Now, so if I have a JPEG of my floor that's very dark, sometimes I won't use it because I like to have my floor almost um, grayed out a little bit. So I can see the design of it, but it's not getting in the way of my grid lines. Let me show you what I mean. So when I navigate to my file, you'll see that this floor uh, is very rich in color. And 
I don't necessarily want that to be so saturated as I'm designing. I can't see the black lines as easily. Um, so when I get out of here and I accept all these changes, I can't, I don't necessarily want to design on such a dark floor. So in this case, you can either get rid of your floor by going back to the grid designer, clicking on the floor cover tool, and then just hitting cancel. And it'll say, do you want to remove it? Yes. And I'll show you what I would do in this scenario. So I would click on the floor cover tool here in the top right corner of the toolbar. And I'll go maybe a quarter step so I can click on these corners perfectly and get it in place. And then what I would do is I would navigate, I would say choose a floor cover image, navigate to my file. There's the floor, but now what I like about doing it outside of the grid designer is that I can go floor opacity 40% accept. Now I can see right here now when I write that this is just a little bit clearer for me. So there's two ways of doing it. You can add your floor in the grid designer or you can add it outside of the grid designer. Now, if you made the JPEG already lower in opacity, you can just add it in the, the grid designer and, and you've got it. But um, in this case, because I like to have my opacity lowered, I did it the second route where I did it using the floor cover tool outside of grid designer. Okay. So now when you look at your 3D, you've got uh, the indoor arena, which has been uh, staged for you, which is nice. As soon as you pick an indoor grid, it does this. So if you don't like the green around here, we can change that. You go up here to File, Document Options, Real View Perspective. I pick a ground, and I usually just make it black. Choose, okay. I just feel like that looks a little bit more authentic to what you're going to get at an indoor show. Now, some people also like to have uh, the back curtain up like the curtain in Dayton. So we can, I'll show you how to do that. So essentially you can just go, uh, go up here to the right corner and click on this little grid. It's the zoom move grid area thing. Click it again. And you're gonna create a performer right on the center line. And it can be a little bit further back from your tarp if you'd like. And then, um, oh, it's asking me to save. So I'll save. All right, now I'll select my performer and I'm gonna click on the little flag here, the visuals editing tool. And I'm gonna go to the performer prop tab. So we're gonna turn this performer into a prop. It's going to be a shape prop and it's gonna be a panel vertical. And we know that our tarp is pretty wide. It's a 50, uh, 70 foot wide. So let's go width, let's go ooh, 100, height uh, 60. Now that's gonna give us kind of a big look to it. Now let's have a look. Yeah, that fill, fills up the arena. It's a, you know, about the right size. All right, so that looks good. Okay, now you can really go the next mile, the extra mile and click here on the pencil. And look, right here, they have a black curtain JPEG for you. Now, one thing about the new, uh, some of the newer updates is sometimes when you do that and you hit apply changes, it doesn't do anything. But it does put it right here in this drop down and you gotta pick it again. So just watch out for that. And then hit apply changes. So now, it looks more like a curtain. So you've got a indoor grid. You've picked your, uh, your setup. You know how to add numbers or letters depending on how you like to teach. You've got your floor on there, but not only that, it looks rich and perfect on the, on the design, but on the, on the um, uh, writing side, its opacity is down so it's easy to see, so it's clear for you to write. You've got everything set up. So now you're set up to set any other extra um, bits that you need. Now, a lot of us use props, so I'll show you how to add a prop. Now, in this instance, uh, I'm gonna show you how to add 
uh, a stagnant prop that's just uh, in this back right corner. Say we wanted a bird's nest or a big bird bird cage. Um, we'll add a performer. I just use my point tool, add a performer and accept. Doing all of this, of course, at count zero. I haven't even touched my timeline yet. I'm going to select that performer, click my red flag again for my visuals editing tool, performer prop, dome. That's the, kind of the shape I want for maybe the top of it. So let me do this. This is a good shape for the top of our dome. I'm going to move that over and I'm going to create another performer next to it. Just doing all the same things, dot tool. And I'm going to do a shape tool again and a column. And I'm going to pick my my feet. My height is going to be 10 feet. And my width needs to be 8 again. So now I've got, mm, let's make that match the other one. Okay, so now we've got, um, I've got kind of the, the, the base here and the top of the cage. And I'll show you how to put those two, two together. I'm actually going to make this a little bit shorter. It looks a bit too tall to match what we're doing. Let's go eight feet. All right. So now I've got the, the base of my birdcage, and then I've got the top of my birdcage. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to say, you are going to be a prop that can be walked on. Apply. And you are going to be a prop that can walk on performer props and hit apply changes. Now I can move you over and hopefully you will stack. And let's have a look. Hey, now we've got the birdcage idea. Okay, the last bit is applying a, um, a skin, if you will, to the prop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I already got the, the PNG file of the birdcage. I'm going to navigate to where that is. Birdcage, open. Select it again in the drop down. It's kind of a two-step process. Hit apply changes. And you'll see the top looks like the birdcage. Now we've got to get the other bit. I may have to move this over again and off. That way I can select this guy. All right, now I don't have to do the pencil again for the base because it's already here in the drop down. Apply changes. Let's go bring this person over here. And all of a sudden, we should have a prop. Now, does it look necessarily like it from the back? Not really, but from the very front, you have a nice setup. Um, and, you know, anybody watching the animation will be able to see um, you know that that's where it's supposed to be that's what you're supposed to be doing and interacting with it that sort of thing okay so I hope this uh, tutorial for you uh, has been helpful uh, one last little tip so now you have the bird cage we've got the grid we've got everything we've got the opacity of the floor we've got the curtain we've got the look of the file everything looks great you are ready to design your show. One last thing I do is I highlight my props, anything that is not moving, and I go to display, and I go down to lock selection. Now the reason I do that is so that I can freely select whoever I want on the floor, and I won't worry about messing up my props or my curtain. Plus it kind of grays them out in the, the drill so you can see where they're at, um, but it, it uh, also kind of makes their opacity softer. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. If you're getting ready and fired up to get started with indoor, um, this has hopefully been a benefit to you and uh, you've, you've gleaned some extra little bits here to make your files look amazing as you uh, get set to take on the indoor season. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you like these Pyware videos.